Alrighty, let's get straight into it. Let's start with the sodium potassium pump. The first thing some of you may say before even reading this question is why the heck are there so many answer choices? And the reason why there are so many answer choices is because, first of all, I want most of you to know that the MCAT has four answer choices, but there are seven here. And this is because I want to impart a strategy on you. I want to encourage everyone to not look at the answer choices. I want you to predict an answer and then match. And I encourage you to do this for pretty much every part of the MCAT. Why do I encourage you to do this? I encourage you to do this because when you predict, you have much a smaller chance of getting biased or you know swayed by very tempting answer choices. More importantly, uh, when you predict, you can, you're can you way more likely to get the question right. And second of all, you don't waste time reading all the answer choices and getting confused by them. If you spent time going down every single one of these answer choices, you would get confused and you'd waste time. And on the MCAT, time is a commodity. So just uh, my two cents about strategy. With that being said, let's move on to the actual question. The sodium potassium pump pumps X in and X out is basically what this question is asking. It's a factual question, but I'm actually going to go over how you can actually learn what the sodium potassium pump does without memorizing it. Okay, without memorizing it, just by knowing some few conceptual facts, you can reason what the sodium potassium pump does, and you don't have to memorize it. And that's something I see students say all the time. You know, like, oh, I didn't memorize this. Like, if the MCAT asked me this, it would be bad, because what if I didn't memorize it? Well, you usually don't need to memorize too much for the MCAT. You need to know certain theoretical concepts and build off of them, and you can actually answer most of the questions. And you'll see how I do that here. Uh, but if you memorize this function of the sodium potassium pump, all, all the more power to you. I mean, I don't personally think it's a useful way to learn, um, but if, if it works for you, that's great. Before we start, I want you to know that this is a very important um, discovery, the sodium potassium pump. And I'm going to give you two facts. First of all, it won the 1997 Nobel Prize. Okay, anything that wins the Nobel Prize is a big deal. So, um, and first of, and second of all, it's very recent, and it's in all animal cells. Okay, so it's in all animal cells, and the fact that it's in all animal cells is is another indication that it's probably pretty important. It's probably in a, a lot of um, prokaryotic cells as well, but it's not it's not all of them. Uh, last but not least, the other thing I want you to know is that alcohol. inhibits the pump, okay? Alcohol literally inhibits this pump. And you might be wondering, who cares? Uh, it doesn't inhibit the pump all around your body. It, in it inhibits the pump in certain parts of your brain. And the reason I want you to know why this matters is because this means you can't move uh, as well or balance. It affects your movement and balance. And that's something that's also imperative. So I want you to see right away why this is important and why this is an MCAT question. Even though you might think the sodium potassium pump has nothing to do with medicine, what do you know? Right here is a perfect example of how it does. With that being said, if you want to answer the question, go ahead, pause the video now and do it. Uh, but I'm going to show you conceptually how to do this question. So the two concepts being tested here are this thing called um, resting membrane potential. And I'm going to get to the second concept in a bit. But I want you to know about the resting membrane potential. The resting membrane potential is something that you all should know for the MCAT. And this is something you should memorize if you don't already know this. But almost all cells are at negative 70 millivolts, which means the inside, inside of a cell is, is more negative than outside. Okay? And you might be saying, okay, Prudak, I don't really care about that. Like, let's say I did know that. And I'm assuming most students do. Most students, uh, by the time they've taken biology, have gotten it in their head that the resting membrane potential is negative 70 millivolts. Um, but how does that affect anything? Well, you might also know that the resting membrane potential is brought about by the sodium potassium pump. And because it's brought about the so by the sodium potassium pump, the fact that the inside is more negative than the outside means that the pump pumps more positive ions out than in. This is a critical part of this question. If you can link the sodium potassium pump to the resting memory potential, which is the inherent link, you can right away Make the, make the conclusion that the pump has to pump more positive ions out than in because the resting membrane potential is negative. So right away you can say that the, the answer to the question is likely going to say it's going to pump more positive ions out than in. Okay. Now we the second thing that of this question that we have to do is we have to figure out the direction. Oh God, that's disgusting. Okay, we have to figure out the direction of ions. 
okay? Which way does sodium move and which way does potassium move? And this is another thing that I like to make sure you all know uh, because I want you to think of all your cells in your body. And you might know one of the most prominent cells in your body is this thing called a neuron. So I'm going to draw my best, my best depiction of a neuron right here. Um, and I'm going to draw and run around like this, okay? That's my neuron. Um, and you know that a neuron is a cell in your body. So, and a cell, so the neuron has to have sodium potassium pumps. But more importantly, I also want you to know that your neuron kind of looks like a banana, right? <laughs> it looks like a banana. So the, the strategy I use for this is to remember that at all of your cells, the reason why I'm bringing up the fact that the neuron looks like a banana is that all of your cells are bananas in the ocean. All of your cells are like bananas in the ocean. And you might be saying, "Where? what the heck are you saying? Um, I don't even know how to spell bananas, so I'm going to abbreviate it bananas. Or maybe that's just an in the ocean. And you're saying, okay, what does that mean? Well, the fact that all of your cells are bananas in the ocean means that, first of all, what do bananas have a lot of? Bananas have a lot of potassium. And so if all of your cells are like bananas, cells have high potassium inside. Second of all, if they're in the ocean, any of you who have taken a dip in the ocean know that the um, outside of the cell, they have high K plus outside, uh, but I mean inside of the cell, but the outside of the cell is going to have high sodium outside. And the reason why is because if you're a banana in the ocean, the ocean is full of sodium chloride, and so you have high sodium outside. So with that being said, if you combine those two points, if you combine those two points that there's high sodium outside the cell and high, uh, high potassium inside the cell, and you combine it with the fact that more positive ions have to be pumped out by this pump than in by this pump, then you can assume that the pump pumps, first of all, first of all, you can assume that the pump pumps K plus in, right? Because it's a banana. The cell is a banana, and we want potassium in the cell. But the pump also pumps sodium out. Do you see that? We conceptually figured that out. We did not have to memorize anything aside from my really funny mnemonic, the way I remember it. The second thing we have to remember is that the cell pumps more sodium, uh, the, the cell pumps more positive ions in, outside the cell than inside the cell because remember, the cell's uh, resting membrane potential is negative 70. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you guys to make the link here. Okay? If if cell is pumping put sodium, potassium in and sodium out, it obviously has to pump out more sodium than potassium in, right? It has to pump out more sodium than potassium in. And, you know, the numbers don't really matter in this case, but you can go back. If you go back to the start of this and you look for the answer, the answer has to say um, a certain number. It has to pump out. The answer has to be that the pump out more sodium than potassium. Okay, so now you can actually, we have a prediction here. This is our prediction. And if you go back now, if you go back, the only answer choice that has, first of all, sodium going out and potassium going in, you have to look for the one where it says sodium going out. Okay, so this, this one is not saying sodium goes out, so A is not right. Uh, this one does not say sodium goes out, so C is wrong. Um, this one does not, this one does, D and E say that, and F does not, so that's wrong. Next, we have to know that more sodium is pumped out than potassium is pumped in. So in this case, three sodium is pumped out, then two potassium is pumped in, that sounds about right. Three sodium is pumped in and two sodium is pumped out. So D cannot be right because that's pumping out less than it's pumping in. So D is wrong because, the, because, of, our, because of our assumption that we're at a negative resting membrane potential. And similarly, E is wrong because there's no numerical difference here. It's 2 and 2. So you would have a, a net balance of 0 there. So that we, that's why E is wrong. And that's why B is your answer here. B is the answer. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our last page. Uh, and if anyone's watching the video and you want to just skip right to the end, the answer is B. Okay, and notice how we figured that out conceptually. 
we actually work through some several key concepts like the resting membrane potential. I give you a mnemonic how to remember how the cell works. I, I told you there's more potassium inside, more sodium outside. And I also talked about how some medical applications are, ten, are totally based off of this. Neurons in your cerebellum, which is a part of your brain responsible for, for, for balance, are inhibited when you drink a lot of alcohol. And there, therefore, when you drink, you might notice yourself feeling, as they say, tipsy. And that's clearly a uh, direct link to the sodium-potassium pump. So I hope this was a great first video. I hope to make a lot of these in the future. This will totally be the general format. I, I'll hopefully get a stylus so my penmanship is better. But if you appreciated this video, give it a big thumbs up. Follow along for more questions. And I also would love to answer questions of your own. So comment below and obviously subscribe. Great. See you guys next time.